Hi, this is Sean, and this is a quick discussion tutorial on anaglyphic stereoscopic for a design project that's going on. I was asked to talk about some of the tools and technology and maybe thought some of the thought process for how you might apply some of them. So the key is really the key is always design, right? You want to make sure that you're conceptual and visual are really strong and they're supported by the technology. They may even comment on the technology. The technology you want to make sure that you it, it accelerates your workflows, it allows you to iterate, which allows more design possibilities. You also want to make sure you know what the problems and cautions are connected to that specific technology. Um, so given that your the discussion is on anaglyphic stereoscopic, it has certain issues in terms of like the frame, edges, you know, color isn't exactly replicated from what we're normally seeing. Anyhow, you should know the problems and solutions for some of that. Uh, now, in terms of what technologies you might want to use, well, you could conceivably go back and use the my in 2009 Maya 2009 there was a stereo camera introduced it's a really nice stereo rig I dropped one into a Maya 2018 scene you just go under create cameras stereo camera and once you have that in your scene um, some of the nice things about it is that it has controls for placement of the zero parallax meaning where the the red uh, and green and blue channels all come together so where you want that to be in terms of interaxial separation that's the distance between your eyes I and mean, it's pretty standard for an adult um, about five to six uh, centimeters um, you also have the the zero parallax plane that it's a lot easier to see if you are viewing it from like above you can see the, the, the plane, how it's showing up there, which is cool. Um, there's also the, um, in terms of the, the stereo camera, you can have a safe viewing volume as well. Anyhow, it's a cool rig. You could conceivably also, um, and you can see if you put on stereo glasses, you're getting pretty decent results here. I mean, if, if this was for a, say, project on 1950s style stereoscopic, you could even conceivably thinking think about like kicking out something from the, you know, like using Play Blast or the hardware render buffer, which was deprecated in Maya 2018. So <laughs> you kind of have to figure out how you're going to, um, you could do the standard uh, workflow, which was rendering out each camera left and right, and then bring it into After Effects and compositing based on the red and the green and blue channels. I mean, that's the standard workflow. Um, another possibility is you might even consider like doing your camera work inside of Maya, then baking out the keyframes and exporting the camera as part of your FBX and taking that into Unreal and then doing the real-time rendering in uh, a GPU-based rendering solution. Okay, so that's a possibility. So here are some links. I'll, I'll provide a, a link to this Google Doc at the um, when I upload this. There's the Maya stereo camera docs are really good. Uh, they talk about a lot of the issues having to do with stereoscopic and the, specifically about the camera rig. Um, there's also a, a decent tutorial, one of the more popular ones from way back in 2010. Okay. Uh, the other possible solution is just using the, if you have access to an NVIDIA graphics card, if you just right click on your desktop, you can open up the NVIDIA graphics uh, control panel. And you can then go in and you can see that there's a stereoscopic 3D right here. And you can, what's really useful is having access to these, like once you've gone through the setup routine, knowing these stereoscopic 3D effects hotkeys really make a difference for tweaking it out. Because it does, it, uh, it definitely needs a lot of tweaking is what I found. Um, and also make sure you really test both based on what's right in front of your eyes in front of the screen, but also if you're projecting this, you're gonna want to test the output for that as well. Because stereoscopic really, the output varies based on where you're sitting and also like what is the color 
gamma of like a, if you're trying to show it in a, on a screen, like what's the the color like in, in even the glasses you're using. So make sure you test, test, test. Okay, so anyhow, I've got that turned on. I've got an Unreal scene. Um, so Control Shift T, and there it is. It it turns on the stereoscopic. And what else? Well, I mean the hotkeys for um, modifying how close or how far away the the stereo is um, is tweakable. I had another thought of like you know messing with uh, making um, some render target 2D is like a stereoscopic um, billboard or something like that. I and mean, you could conceivably do some of the real-time stereoscopic by just doing these render target 2Ds. If you're familiar with uh, the Unreal workflows and then just doing the compositing on the fly in Unreal. So I mean, that's sort of a possibility or not. Um, you could conceivably build your own stereo rig with different controls, but I don't see any point for doing that if it's a sprint project. So I guess finally you could do a lot of your uh, compositing work inside of After Effects as well. There's some really great tutorials from, that explain a lot of the process and building even your own rigs. On Plural site. there's a Maya Stereoscopic course on lynda.com. There's some discussion for even how to like tweak out just standard photos using Photoshop. Um, and then there's a link in this doc to the lecture slides on anaglyphic stereoscopic. So that pretty much wraps it up. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good one.